Young doctors don't like to work in emergency department because of shift work, lack of private practice and less income compared to surgical and other procedural medical specialties. In Australia, 12 to 15% of training positions in emergency medicine are unfilled. In 2023, over 550 positions in emergency medicine residency training program were unfilled in the US, which is 18.4% of their total offering. That's actually a jump from 2022. In the UK, it is one of the most exhausting field for both junior doctors and senior doctors. In countries like India, there's a program called MD in emergency medicine and Pakistan FCPS in emergency medicine. These programs are still not preferred specialist training program, mainly because there is no proper EM setups for jobs as a consultant. But regardless of the statistic, we need to look at emergency medicine through a different lens altogether. In some strange way, I feel like saying it is actually quite satisfying when you pick up a diagnosis and when you manage a patient really well to hear that thanks and then obviously paid very well for that. Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Rizwan Qureshi and I've been working as an emergency medicine consultant for the past six years in Australia. And today I'm going to highlight why emergency medicine can be the least desired but at the same time, most secure specialty to work. I'm going to break this conversation down into why in the US EM is falling out of trend. 10 reasons why emergency medicine is getting unpopular. 10 reasons why emergency medicine is still acceptable. Money in emergency medicine. Number five, is there a country where emergency medicine is ideal? Emergency medicine in 10 years from now. Finally, I'll lay out my conclusions to round up the discussion. So, and if you've not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe. It shows your appreciation and help the channel grow. So why in the US emergency medicine is falling out of fashion? Number one, 40% of the patient reduction early in COVID led to replacement of emergency medicine doctors by nurse practitioners and physician assistant. Some emergency medicine residents were not able to find a job later in the program. Number two, burnout due to ever increasing work. I like the comment by one of the program directors that you're not going to get any well-being in a practical sense by giving out hero badges and pizzas and food stamps and educational trips. It's more about creating a better working environment for the entire emergency medical team, having a better flow of patients, having the right subset of patients coming to emergency medicine and other specialties taking their share of work. I was listening to this podcast and one of the program directors said a very good thing. The reason it's falling out of popularity, it's actually a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And I think, the reason that he was trying to say that we as emergency doctors do quite a lot of venting out and we vent out frustration with the workplace practices, poor work culture and medical students and junior doctor listen to us and that venting out actually influences their decision of joining or not joining emergency medicine and that in the US has actually led to a trend of emergency medicine being out of fashion. Also. This might be because in the US, the health system is private and it's like a business and they are looking to improve emergency medicine services by incorporating telehealth, urgent care centers and those EDs which are functioning, they should be run by the nurse practitioners and physician assistant, which might be more cost effective compared to hiring and training expensive resident and doctors over a course of four years or three years residency program. So why is emergency medicine getting unpopular in other parts of the world like UK and Australia. Number one, I think shift work. Evening and night shifts can take a significant toll on your physical and mental well-being. Number two, lack of private practice and financial growth can be a major issue for some doctors, especially the migrant doctors who come here for a reason of having a financial growth and stability. And emergency medicine, though it can promise all of that, it does not, you know, offer that exorbitant amount of money. Number three, interpersonal conflict. Now, this is a major issue. Referring patients and being refused every day by different specialties on every shift, that can be very demoralizing. And you know, you're trained to deal with conflict as an emergency medicine resident, which is not a part of the training of surgical resident, at least to the degree that we are trained to. So I think these conflicts need to be smoothed out for the better well-being of our residents and trainees. Number four, access block. Now, access block is a condition when an emergency department run out of beds, there are no beds in the hospital, and everybody is piled up in the corridors, ambulances are lined up in the corridors, and the waiting room is full of patient. Number five, well-being. Emergency medicine is physical. You know, you're running around, you're doing procedures, you're talking to the patients. It is quite enduring. You're sitting in front of the patients at all times. 
their alarms their announcement there's no actual downtime the emergency consultant jobs have dried up in major cities and even in the regional areas in the west majority of the patients in the hospitals are geriatric population like those patients who are above 80 years of age and often with complex health problems which can be very difficult to address in the short span of time that we are assessing patients and sorting them out also there is a lot of mental health social drugs alcohol which you know all of these chaotic issues tend to you know front up emergency at odd hours post covid every patient is now rushing to emergency for their neglected health with both serious and also non serious cases number 11 or lastly no proper emergency setups in developing countries despite having hundreds of doctors and training programs second choice now emergency medicine is perhaps the top second choice specialty doctors who cannot get into surgery radiology anesthesia and other niche specialty end up being in emergency medicine because there's always plenty of jobs around and the whole career can be some sort of a compromise why emergency medicine is it still acceptable well you will never run out of work in any country both from regular income and locum income point of view there's plenty of work flexibility of work you can work in different days of the week and different hours because of the flexibility emergency medicine doctor can influence other interests like business education hobbies variety of clinical practice from trauma to critical care to ong to pediatric core medicine makes you a pure and proficient journalist as an emergency physician you develop a critical thinking skills that lead to a strong decision making power emergency physicians are great tutors for a practice of medicine the practical medicine the clinical procedure and communication skills number 8 emergency medicine physicians do not have the continuity of care and you can come work your shift and when you're done you're done there are no ward rounds there are no clinics no ot none of that work and play modes only emergency medicine doctor can make real difference in life by saving life or catastrophe this in itself can be hugely satisfying part of my work junior doctors who have good emergency medicine experience and references can work with ease in other specialties when they're going to acute medicine or orthopedics or surgery because we are like a tutti frutti mix up of all of these specialties in short a bridge form last but not least it is one big teamwork no emergency medicine doctors work alone you have senior supervision specialists to help and escalate and the whole culture is to seek help and escalate and despite being very high risk the practice of emergency medicine is perhaps the most safest amongst all of the other specialties in medicine what about the value for money first i believe as a doctor one can earn reasonably well however that earning will not make one rich in real sense let me explain i always believe that if you have more time and enough money to enjoy that time then you are rich but if you have all the money in the world but limited or no time to enjoy any of that then what good is that money for you for example a doctor in niche procedural specialty may earn up to 1.5 to 2 million dollars per annum here in australia but the amount of work they put in to achieve that number is insane the point being if you are yourself working for every dollar that you earn you will be limited by your own time for financial growth and also your freedom in terms of having downtime in australia you can see emergency medicine physicians have a mix up of their work junior consultant level earning 400 to 500 thousand dollars per annum is not bad at all now emergency medicine physicians have leadership skills they utilize these skills now in developing other businesses and interests like education courses international conferences uh, a massive growth in ultrasound there are emergency physicians who have developed their own medical centers cosmetic clinics even proper investment businesses i think that is showing that you're earning more money by being more available and being a proper entrepreneur is, is there a country where emergency medicine seem to have an ideal practice from uk middle east australia or the us the challenges of emergency medicine will always exist no matter where you go but countries like pakistan and india there are no proper em setups at least in that number of quantity where they should be countries like uk have proper setups but they are hugely or completely engulfed where every medical social mental problem 
comes to emergency. Australia is perhaps not too far off to come to that state of the UK, but they are making changes to avoid that trajectory of disaster as UK is seeing. Most white emergency medicine doctors in the UK come to Australia for better work-life balance, better salary, and they never leave due to better climate and better working conditions. UK ethnic minority emergency doctors tend to migrate to United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, only to be disappointed with the nature of work and either moving back or moving to a different Middle Eastern country. I personally think still Australia is an ideal country to practice emergency medicine. In the US, the emergency medicine practice is far from ideal. The US emergency medicine doctors survey report highest rates of burnout compared to other specialties. What's the future of emergency medicine? I see the future of emergency medicine, at least in Australia, being dominated by four key services. Number one, telemedicine. Number two, urgent care. Number three, technology with integration of artificial intelligence. Number four, physician assistants and nurse practitioners. Australia is a large country and number of senior skilled emergency medicine doctors are not enough to provide that quality care to every patient. In Victoria, the telemedicine services are expanding much faster than in New South Wales. The Australian government have recently invested $358 million over the next five years for 58 urgent care centres and led by GPs to see CAT4 and 5 patients to minimise the burden on public emergency department. This could really complement existing major emergency services. I also believe emergency physicians should also be allowed to work private billing in urgent care centres. Not only they will actually see those patients at much quicker rate, but they would also be able to educate the GPs to see them with an emergency mindset. The actual patient management software and emergency are lacking core emergency medicine workflow. To assess the patient, I have to do 15 clicks on a software. To order a test, that'd be another 20 to 30 clicks. And to discharge a patient, I need at least 20 clicks, which waste precious time. Technology can help with building advanced triage tools. With the integrated AI, we'll have more accurate patient sorting. These technological advancements, along with good training, will have much more of the work sorted or automated. Emergency medicine services can embrace more of the nurse practitioner and physician assistant. It will help keep the flow strong and it will keep real emergency doctors doing the real critical thinking and managing the patient's resuscitation and acutely unwell state. Conclusion. The specialty of emergency medicine is what we call a victim of its own success. It was created to save lives and now it's expected to maintain every medical, social, mental issue, which cannot be undone. And we need to be better, smarter, and develop systems to deal with this challenge. There's no way that we can turn the patients around because it is providing medicine at any time for anyone. And yes, we need hospital beds and we need more staffing, but they are not the solution. The failure of emergency medicine is because of lack of poor health planning at the community and primary health care level. There is a huge expectation from doctor working in emergency medicine, which is not sustainable. And hence we see sick calls, poor morale, and overall doctors signing off from emergency medicine residency training program or training altogether. If you train doctor, if you make them learn and grow, they will feel more valued. Don't just overwhelm them with this unnecessary service of mental and social chaos. Finally, I foresee the core of emergency medicine will be diluted, which is both needed and actually inevitable. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and do look after yourself and each other. Thank you very much and goodbye.